Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Gab bopping away uh, as always. Interesting, Gab saying he felt that Osman would struggle in the Premier League because of the jump of level wow. uh, from well, Italy wow. to England. Frank the Bob is with us as well. Ali <laughs> uh, Moreno and Stevie Nicol. Very on late, uh, joins. You were telling us, Ali, you're watching a video of old France against the Netherlands earlier today? France against the Netherlands, and it finished 3 2 Netherlands. Right. Frank was playing, and the reason I. I started watching the highlight, and then I saw Frank was playing out, and I really paid attention. Wow. Not his best game. What was his marks out of 10, would you give him? I'm going to say a 6. Oh, OK. That's not bad with your level. No, well, but th there were a couple of moments in which he came up short. Why are you short. watching old international games? Well, because I was doing digital this morning, and I had to do some prep on, on previewing some of the games that are going to oh, happen. So you delved into the history. Yeah, I, yes, and I happened to come across. <laughs> wow. This. Frank, do you remember that game when you were rubbish? <laughs> yes, and uh, uh, and so many games that I was rubbish, you know. But I tried right. to disguise, you know. But uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I remember, and I know what Ali is referring. I think on the second or the third goal, you know, I thought that uh, if I touched the ball with the head, you know, it would have been more mistake than something anything else. So I let it go, and I think the the strikers came just behind me and scored the goal. If you remember, uh, is that right, Ali? You that got, is correct. You, you confirm that to me. Senden. Senden got him behind and oh, scored. no, yeah. not Senden. Yeah. Come on, just, Frank. I'm just, I'm just telling you. And then I saw Frank! <laughs> Clear it, Frank! Hit the ball, Frank! Well, yeah, I said the same. <laughs> Ali, don't worry. I say, Frank, what's going on, Frank? What's wrong with you? Uh, Too, late. Yeah, you Too late. Too late. <laughs> there you are. You won the World Cup. Okay. <laughs> uh, for all, well, let's go with Gab first. What, what are your favourite and least favourite parts about international break, Gab? Ooh, so my uh, favorite part, especially for the March one, is just having a chance to kind of basically catch your breath a little bit before the. Haven't you been on holiday since the World Cup, Gab? I'm feeling <laughs> generic. <laughs> I, and by the way, Jules is going on holiday soon too. So. Oh, well, well, there uh, you go. You're both to... as bad as each other. It's good to clear your mind a little bit at this stage of the season. Um, right. Least favorite is that nobody nobody's jazzed up. It's the start no. of European qualifying, at least here in Europe, where you know you're gonna get 24 teams qualifying. Uh, it's really hard to get excited about this, and and it's just sad to see all the players pulling out of the national team games, um, you know, with with injuries which may or may not be real. Although this time around, I'm excited for Italy's uh, uh, new center forward, Matteo Retegi, who. From Argentina, probably didn't know he was Italian until very recently. But hey, mm. if it works, worked fine with the last guy, Camoranesi. Hopefully, works well with uh, this guy too. Beautiful, uh, Ali. What did you like about international break? I got a chance to go and play in front of my family, oh. who I didn't always get a chance to do. The least because they sent you to the states when you were young, yeah, just to kind of oh. get rid. <laughs> Well, I didn't think that that was the feeling <laughs> quite exactly. But yes, I was. I left Venezuela uh, when I was a teenager. Right. And I didn't get a chance to play in front of my family all that often. So going back to play with the Venezuelan national team gave me that opportunity. The least favorite thing was actually traveling. Right. Not very smooth in South America. Okay. It wasn't always the most direct way to fly to certain places and and, I, and I, I can only speak about my national team. Let's just say that we weren't always on time. Okay. And uh, we may have gotten stuck in a few places <laughs> and it wasn't, it, that was not enjoyable. Right. The travel logistics were not enjoyable. Right, Stevie? Yeah, the, the travel bit's easy. Okay. Oh. <laughs> well, thanks. Well, I mean, I, mean just, I think I, told, I might have told you this before, but I mean, if you think about it, particularly today, all these players fly everywhere. Right. Yeah, you know, if we were playing a, a, a game away on a Wednesday yeah. in Scotland, we would we'd spend all day in the car on Sunday to go to Scotland, right? We'd spend all day travelling on the Monday to go to the country we were we were playing at. We'd train on the Tuesday. We'd play on the Wednesday night. We'd come straight back. We'd arrive back in Scotland about stupid o'clock in the morning. Mm. You'd get a couple of hours sleep. Why are you telling get, us all this? I'm just telling you how bad it was and why it was <laughs> my least favourite. Oh, I see. So then you've got to, you've got to travel again all the way back from Scotland right. back to Liverpool on oh. the Thursday. Yes. 
train Friday morning, <laughs> yeah. and if you're playing away at somewhere like Norwich on a Saturday, get back on the bus and spend the day on the bus and then have to play on the Saturday. I mean, it was horrendous. Oh. People would laugh. <laughs> People would laugh. I said, if you joke, Stephen. Honestly, they were sitting thinking, what is he talking about? Yeah, well, I think that's what Gab's doing now. <laughs> Honestly, it was horrendous. And of course, you've got Ronnie well, Moran, who the, first, the last thing out of his mouth would be, I don't want anybody complaining about travelling during the week. You better right. turn up today and make sure you play. I mean... You weren't driving, were you? <laughs> you weren't driving the bus. Oh, no. Right. Well, that, was, that was the only thing we did do. You, <laughs> what, what, what was well, your favourite? You, you live in Liverpool, Stevie. Like, that's halfway Sorry? to Scotland. Uh, <laughs> you lived in Liverpool. Uh, Just yeah, drive uh, 30 minutes six, to Manchester, uh, hop on hours. the train, bish, bash, bosh, <laughs> you're at Hamden. What do you want? Oh, why? Uh, oh, yes, I. Uh, oh, dear. Yeah. The favourite <laughs> bit was a Sunday night, actually. Because then we'd get together, everybody would get together in the hotel. Right. And we'd have a few beers, the whole team. That nice. Was good. That was yeah, I bet that was good fun. Right? Was good. Yeah. Uh, Frank, what about yourself? Don't tell us boring oh, travel I stories. I love international breaks because I finally, I was finally able to play with players of my level, you know, like Zidane, yeah. Uh, yeah. Jock F, you know, <laughs> Petit Vieira. <laughs> <laughs> And not with Craig Burley and yep. some others, you know. So I was, I was very happy to. Uh, no, I was of course kidding, you know. Well, I, it's always an enjo enjoyable know. time because I was I had the chance to play with wonderful players, you know, and uh, and win mostly the games. Yeah, well, yes, against apparently the you won. Yeah, World Cup, Frank. <laughs> uh, your least favorite part, Frank? Ah. Uh, well, uh, being most of the time seated on the bench, uh, which almost <laughs> never happened, you know, when I was playing with clubs. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been said that PSG's front three not defending is the reason why they can't win crucial Champions League matches. But isn't their midfield the bigger issue since Verratti is their only world-class midfielder? MSN at Barcelona worked so well because they had a dominant midfield behind them. Frank, what do you think? No, I think it's a it's a wrong problem, you know. Um, uh, on the modern time, you know, of course you need a, a, a middle of the park, you know, midfield players who are very strong and work for the others. And and we saw with that with Liverpool when they were at their best, you know, it's because they are they are playing, running, and working hard for everybody. But we all well into the conclusion when you have like three mega stars playing up front and not defending, it's impossible for the rest of the team to be united and to compensate. That's not how it works right now. And we see that with all big teams, with City and, and so many other uh, clubs where players are involved, even the players from the front are involved in a defensive uh, situation. And that's, it has to work like that, otherwise it doesn't work for me. Stevie, last week the panel said it's ridiculous for Ten Hag bringing up incidents from other games to defend Casemiro's red card. Mm. Thoughts on your defence of Mitrovic's red card using Bruno's action from two weeks back? Well, I, th I think they're two different arguments entirely. You know, the fact that a referee made a mistake and not sending somebody off in a game seven days previous to, to Man United playing, you've just got to look at the incident when it comes to a challenge. And it's a red card. Right. It makes no difference what happened somewhere else the previous week. OK. The Mitrovic one is a completely different ball game, in my opinion, because we're talking about a ban, right? We're talking about a punishment. And so when the body who's going to be punishing the player the previous week has seen somebody do, you would disagree, but I would say it's a similar, a similar action and done nothing, then that will, that will definitely affect what happens with Mitrovic. And when I say definitely will affect, it means that they can't turn around and give him a 20-week a, a ban or a 20-game ban because it'll look ridiculous because of the decision they made the week before. That's a completely different argument. But is it not just they made, the, they made the wrong decision the week before? They made a mistake and they can't be held to on that the, mistake. On the sending off? They're, no, they can't be held to that mistake that they didn't punish Bruno. But, and they, they can't, can't let Mitrovic off because they didn't let Bruno. You cannot say that it doesn't affect the decision. Put it that but way. But it's got it does. You've got to look at it just like that, don't you? Well, the two red cards are, are dead easy. If somebody doesn't get a red card, if they had got it, it'd be three games. 
Casemiro got it. It's three games. But, so uh, that's the same. This is completely. But different. you said that Mitrovic should get six six games. So that's the way it should be. That's I, it, isn't it? I would have given them more had they not let Bruno Fernandes off the week before. Oh really? Dan, but if there's one thing you can't do as a player, it's hit the referee. It's it's right. It's a complete and utter no no. I can't I can't explain how important that is. It's a complete and utter no no that regardless of what decision the referee gives, you can't put your hands on him. Yes. And if you do, right. You can't But argue. it's interesting, you've diluted your down to six games because of what happened previously. Correct. Frank, is Claire Fontaine as idyllic and happy as French Football Federation social media portrays it? Or is it more like a boring boarding school or an open air prison? <laughs> wow. Oh, Claire Fontaine is an absolutely fantastic place to, uh, to prepare yourself because in the middle of nowhere, it's not too far from Paris, but it's still like 50 miles away. And they have nothing to do there. And it's really dedicated to, uh, to football. And I love the place, even if it was, it was hard sometimes to, to get isolated from there. But uh, uh, we proved, you know, during the time of, uh, uh, of um, the national team preparing there that uh, it was a successful uh, place and, uh, and, that, uh, and that's, uh, that's a very good place to be and to, uh, and to, be, um, and to prepare. Did you ever sneak out? Uh, I did once or twice, you know, but not to go to a party or whatever. It was just to uh, get my rage out of uh, my body was I when I wasn't <laughs> playing because of uh, of Femi Jacquet decision. But just going into the forest and uh, and just scream uh, loudly, <laughs> oh, you know, to that make sure. Doesn't to make... <laughs> that doesn't count. Oh, I like that. I like the thought of Frank in a forest shouting because no, he's there. Someone's there walking the dog. That doesn't <laughs> count. Stevie's walking the dog in his big. But I, no, but I. To answer, to answer, to answer to your awkward <laughs> question, you know, to see if we were partying. No, I've never, I never heard anybody leaving the place and partying wow. Uh, wow. at some place because it's too far away from Paris. I, just, I just can like, picture, I can picture Frank with like an axe out there in the forest, just hammering sh away. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, how can you like, drop me? I'm fucking yeah. the buff. <laughs> Doesn't he know? Yes. Uh, okay, uh, let's go to baseball, shall we, Gab? If Shoei Otani was a footballer, what would his transfer be? Transfer fee be north of 300 million, I'd imagine, right? Maybe not 300 million, but I, I don't even know what the parallel is between somebody who, uh, you know, both pitches and bats. And uh, in, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe somebody who, uh, you know, scores scores a couple goals, goals a game like Erling Holland. And then, oh look, the opposition have a you know 90th minute penalty kick. Oh, that's okay. Stick Erling in goal. You know he'll do a better job than than, than Ederson and his neck tattoos. Uh, I, it would have to be something you know so grotesque. Uh, it is. It's it's really unbelievable. Um, and a big shout out uh, to my boys in Japan, of course, where of course. Uh, I partly grew up. Uh, worthy yes. winners, of course of the World Baseball Classic. I don't know, can we call them world champions or are we not allowed to do that? No. Probably not, right? No. Why not? No. How many, how many, I mean, seriously, world champions? Why? It was a world series, it, it was a world series, literally. You had all the countries represented. I'll beg your pardon. I thought you meant, I yeah. thought you were, I thought you were talking about. No, it was the World Baseball Classic. I'll beg that, that concluded with. I thought you were talking about. No, yeah. yeah, I know where you were going. World champion! Yeah. Hey. Because Otani got struck out. <laughs> And that's it and to, to win it for the final so, so how, i don't know much about baseball how much of a unicorn kind of is this to have somebody who can pitch and bat well, it's, it's babe ruth unicorn right that, that's the sort of <laughs> that's that's the sort of uh, region and 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 the sort of conversation that we're in here we, we're talking about a completely different type of conversation because this doesn't happen all that often unless you are in sort of, I'm not even saying minor league, we're talking about maybe high school baseball where you have usually the best the best hitter is sometimes the pitcher for the team. <coughs> but that doesn't translate to success later on. So this is rarefied air. This is uh, something, because as a pitcher, you gotta take care of his arm, right? Because it, okay. Right. But then you also want him out there to hit because this guy can do some crazy things with the bat. He is a, he's a rare, rare species altogether. 
and I think the closest thing that you can maybe in, in, in the world of modern football that you can perhaps equate or see something similar is what Jose Luis Chilaver used to do for Paraguay and used to do for Vélez Sarfin, yes. the goalkeeper, who, right. who was a great goalkeeper, but then in free kicks, they would bring him up. On penalty kicks, they would bring him up, and he would not only come up to take them, but to score them and score big goals in big moments for both national team and club. So maybe that's the one thing or the one parallel that I can draw. Shohei Tani is something special. So, the World Series of what? Baseball. World thought, Baseball Classic. World Baseball Classic. Oh, World Baseball, I beg your pardon. Go. So it's no. not the World Series. Yeah, there you go. It's no Ian Botham, is he, Steve? Yeah. No. No, there you go. The World Series is in uh, October. There you are. Yeah. Uh, well, Frank, geez. there was a game in 97 or 98 <laughs> where you played against Coventry and apparently your kit man forgot to get the away kit, so you ended up playing with Coventry's kit. Can you please explain what happened on that day and what was your reaction? Uh, that was uh, off an awful day for me because, yeah, we, we arrived at the, in the dressing room <laughs> and uh, everybody, everybody knows that Coventry played in blue and, of course, we are the blues and so he forgot the away kit. So we had to ask uh, Coventry to um, loan us their, 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 one of their kit colors and uh, away, on, away kit. So they were, we were in red, we had the stripe-like kind of uh, red and, and black. That was awful and we lost the game and I got very upset at the end of the game and I got the shirt out, I put the shirt out and I threw it in the, in the, in the, in the, on the pitch. And uh, many people for Coventry uh, didn't approve what I did, wrote to the FA, the, the FA wrote to me and said never do that again, otherwise wow. you're going to be banned big time. And I wow. had to apologize, which I do again because I was unprofessional and uh, not nice to do to the commentary fund. We had nothing to do with the, with the, the issue that we had. Then you right. went to the forest yes, and <laughs> screamed yeah. and shouted. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, for Stevie, <laughs> how many times do you say schoolboy stuff oh, in a year? Oh, oh. I hear it at least once every episode you're on, so my guess will be around 150. Well, it depends on the goals we show, doesn't it? Okay, yep. So, that's... I... <laughs> I, I is a good one, yeah. So that's going to bring it out because that's just the best way to, yes. to, to explain it. Yes. Because we all know that when you, you play in the playground and you're a schoolboy, you can run around five people yeah. and people can't have a clue how to spell defend, never mind do it. Yes. So it's, I think it's appropriate. Right. Uh, what about this for a final question? We are going right into the archives. What was your favourite movie growing up? Wow. Wow. Anything spring to mind, Frank? Uh, um, when I was young, I have to say that Back to the Future was a movie that I really yeah. loved and I had the chance to meet uh, uh, Michael J. Fox, you know, straight oh, after the, the, the walk-up in you this up. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I know, I know, but I was, that guy was my, my man and I loved the guy. And, uh, and um, the Schindler List is my oh, best me. movie ever. Wow. The, the yeah. biggest movie I've ever seen. Wow, Frank. Wow. Uh, the, my producer's shouting at me, Frank, because he's saying that Back to the, Back to the Future came out when you were 17 years of age. <laughs> like, they, wanted to, they wanted to take it back <laughs> earlier. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I say, I don't know. I say, I just, it just came out like that, you know. So yeah, that's as the you know, you're under you pressure. Know? I don't know why he's getting angry at you. Right, Gab, where are we going with you? Uh, so my favorite film growing up, and still uh, one of those films that I think I can quote almost every line from is The Breakfast Club. I didn't. I, my shut up, Pete. What did he say, Gab? What did he say again? Breakfast Club. Breakfast Club. <sighs> Breakfast Club. Oh, very good. There we go. Oh, oh, here we go. But I would say Goldfinger. Oh, really? James Bond? Oh, when a James Bond movie <laughs> used to come out, it used to be absolutely big time. I never liked James Bond movies. No? Goulash! Uh, Everyone was on a Goulash. Sunday afternoon, <laughs> raining. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the top man. Yeah. The top man was there, Sean Connery. Oh, no, that was big time. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Ali? Well, the Rocky movies. 
Oh. I remember boxing with my brother on top of the uh, mattress because, you know, it was bouncy like the ring. Yes. Uh, right? <laughs> uh, and we would do the uh, scene with uh, Rocky and Apollo when they both go down and I was about to get up and then he would pull me down and then he would get up and then I'll pull him down. And that's oh, I love I, it. Uh, the Sandlot baseball movie. Oh, I was going to say that. Oh, wow. okay. And the Goonies was. Uh, oh, Goonies there was you go. Yes, I love the Goonies. Have a soft spot for the Goonies. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Oh, going down memory lane. That is it. That brings us to the end of. Yeah, what is yours? What is yours? I liked uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Oh. Beautiful. Classic. Classic old school. It's movie. a lot of rubbish. What do you mean, rubbish? It's a lot of rubbish. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> hey. How dare you? What a nonsense. <laughs> Willy Wonka. Rubbish. Oh. James Bond. Oh, that's uh, that's yeah. goulash. Yeah. Probably Mr. Goulash. Mr. Goulash. Mr. Goulash. That's goulash. No, I've never heard the stuff. Yeah. Goulash. Benny the Jed Rodriguez. <laughs> uh, what about Braveheart, Steve? Oh, oh, oh no, you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're talking. I was a little bit older then. <laughs> what were the ones you didn't what? like? What do you mean? Well, well Goldfinger. Exorcist. <laughs> Exorcist. Yeah, like... I didn't like horror movies. Oh, no. No. Hey, Jaws. Jaws. <laughs> Jaws. Oh no! Even today, when the water, I'm like, oh. oh what about Shining? What about Shining, oh, guys? No. Shining. Oh, no. oh. Yeah, scary, Fantastic. Oh my! Fantastic. You love those, Frank. Yeah. Oh so yes, I love that. that. I love Jack Willy Nicholson. Wonka. Oh my no Willy God, Jack. Willy hey, hey, the exorcism of Emily Rose. That's something. Oh dear me! Mm. That's, that's not like Augustus Gloop going up <laughs> the like river. That. <laughs> All right, then, that is, that is it. Oh, a bit of movie talk. Keep your movie uh, questions coming in. Something to do over international break. Uh, we will be back tomorrow. Uh, Kay will be here taking things oh. a lot more seriously, I think, <laughs> looking, at, looking back at England against Italy and Portugal against Liechtenstein. Hey! hey. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.